So here we want to find the centroid of the upper half of a circle with radius r centered at the origin. And so here we have that circle that we're talking about. We have a circle with a radius of r. What we want to do is find the centroid or the center of mass for the upper half of this circle. And so I'll shade that in. This top half of the circle is the part that we want to find the center of mass for. All right, so remember that the center of mass, or the centroid, of a planar lamina is represented by a coordinate point x bar comma y bar, where x bar is equal to the moment about the y axis divided by the total mass of the lamina, and y bar is equal to the moment about the x axis divided by the total mass of the lamina. All right, now before we go ahead and start calculating things here, it's important to understand what we're trying to find here, the center of mass or the centroid of the upper half of the circle will be a point somewhere within this semicircle where we could balance the lamina, right? So what I mean by that is if you were to cut out a shape of a semicircle out of a piece of paper such that it was shaped just like this, we're looking for the point on the semicircle where you could place a semicircle on your finger and be able to balance it while holding your finger straight up in the air, right? We're looking for the balancing point of this semicircle. And so thinking about that logically, the center of mass of the semicircle should be a point that evenly divides the mass in all directions. And so in terms of an X coordinate where we would want to balance this semicircle, it makes sense that we would want to balance it along the Y axis, right? Where X equals zero. Because this upper half of the circle is symmetrical. It's symmetrical about the Y axis. So whatever the mass of this lamina is, half of it is going to be on this side of the Y axis and the other half is going to be on this side of the Y axis. So in terms of where we should be along the X axis, it makes sense that we would be right in the middle along the Y axis where X equals zero. That would be the X coordinate for our center of mass. Since the semicircle is symmetrical about the Y axis, it's clear that X bar should be equal to zero. So we don't even need to go through this calculation of the moment about the Y axis divided by the mass because it's just going to be zero in the end. Okay, but we still will need to find Y bar, but unlike X bar, we're not gonna be able to logically decide what Y bar should be. It's not really clear where along the Y axis, what value of Y we should be at to perfectly balance this semicircle. It's not entirely obvious what the Y coordinate of our center of mass will be, so we need to find it ourselves. All right, we could guess approximately where it would be, but we wanna find the exact value. So to do that, we're going to need to know the moment about the x-axis and the total mass of our semicircle. And I'm gonna start with the mass. In general, for a planar lamina, we say that the mass is equal to the density, which we represent with rho, times the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x times dx. And of course, this integral right here represents the area of that planar lamina. All right, so a and b would represent the two values of x that the area lies between. f of x would be the function that bounds the area above, and g of x would be the function that bounds the area below. However, we don't need to set up this integral in this case. This integral, like I said, just represents the area of our lamina, which in this case is a semicircle, and we know what the area of a semicircle is, right? or at least we know what the area of a circle is, and so if we know what that is, we can just divide it by two. So if this is a circle with a radius of r, we know that the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared, so the area of a semicircle will be pi r squared times one half. One half of the area of an entire circle. All right, so that's going to be the area of this planar lamina here, or our semicircle. So we don't have to go through the process of integrating to find the area. We can just use our knowledge of a circle to say that the area of the semicircle is pi r squared times one half. So I'm going to replace that for our integral here. This integral, like I said, just represents the area. And so the mass will be equal to rho times one half times pi r squared. All right, so that's the total mass of our planar lamina. Now, unless stated otherwise, we usually assume that the density is one. And in this case, we're not told what the density is. So we could assume that it's one, but I'm gonna leave rho in this calculation and I'll show you how it cancels out at the end. 
because rho is also going to show up in our calculation for the moment about the x-axis. And so let's work on that next. Now the formula for the moment about the x-axis looks like this. The moment about the x-axis is equal to rho times the integral from a to b of one half times f of x squared minus g of x squared times dx. All right, this is the formula that we use to calculate the moment about the x-axis for a planar lamina. Okay, now in order to set this up, we need to know a couple things. We need to know what two values of x our lamina lies between, and we need to know what f of x and g of x are. And these two functions correspond to that same integral we looked at earlier for the area in order to calculate the mass of the lamina. All right, so f of x is the function that bounds the lamina on the top, and g of x is the function that bounds the lamina at the bottom. So in this case, f of x is going to be whatever this curve is here that represents our circle, at least the positive half of it, and g of x is going to be this line right here, the x-axis. That is what bounds our lamina at the bottom. And that's actually pretty easy. The x-axis is just the equation y equals zero. So we can say right away that g of x right here g of x is equal to zero. But how about f of x? What will be the equation of this half of the circle? Well, first, let's just represent this whole entire circle with an equation. The general equation for a circle centered at the origin is x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. In this case, the radius of the circle is just r. So we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared but we just want the top half of the circle. We don't want the entire circle. So what we can do to find the top half is solve for y. So if we subtract x squared from both sides of the equation, we'll have y squared is equal to r squared minus x squared, and then we can take the square root of both sides. That will give us y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. And this right here will represent the top portion of this circle, the upper half. If we wanted the lower half, all we would have to do is put a negative out front of this square root, because when you take the square root of both sides of the equation, what you're saying is that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. We're just choosing to use the positive version for the upper half of the circle. Okay, so this right here, the square root of r squared minus x squared will be f of x in this case. So I'll write that down. f of x is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. Okay, so that takes care of those two functions. We now know what f of x and g of x are, but what about our bounds of integration a and b? What two values of x does our planar lamina lie between? Well, that's not too hard to figure out. This semicircle lies between negative r and positive r. So let's set up this integral the moment about the x-axis will be equal to rho times the integral from negative r to r of one half times the square root of r squared minus x squared squared, and then we are subtracting zero squared times dx. All right, so f of x was the square root of r squared minus x squared, so we have that square root function squared because f of x is being squared, and then g of x is zero, so we have zero squared, okay? So now we can simplify this integral and then solve it to find our moment about the x-axis. So if we simplify, the square root of r squared minus x squared squared will just be r squared minus x squared. The square root and the exponent of two will cancel each other out. So we'll have that this is equal, and I'm gonna pull this one half to the outside. So we'll have rho divided by two times the integral from negative r to r of r squared minus x squared and then we're subtracting zero squared, which is just zero. So we just have r squared minus x squared dx. And so we just have to integrate r squared and x squared and then evaluate at the bounds of integration. Now r squared is just a constant, right? It's just some radius squared. So the integral of r squared with respect to x will just be that constant times x. So this will be equal to rho divided by two times r squared times x minus the integral of x squared. And for x squared, we will use the power rule of integration, which says that we need to add one to the exponent and then divide by that new exponent. So we'll have x cubed divided by three, evaluated from negative r to r. Okay, 
So now, if we evaluate this expression at r and subtract the evaluation at negative r, we will have the moment about the x-axis. And so let's start by plugging r into this expression. This will be equal to rho divided by 2 times r squared times r minus r cubed divided by 3, and then we will subtract the evaluation of this expression at negative r. So let's plug in negative r. We'll have r squared times negative r minus negative r cubed divided by 3. Okay, now if we simplify, this is equal to rho divided by 2 times r squared times r will be r cubed. So we have r cubed minus r cubed divided by 3 minus r squared times negative r. That will be negative r cubed and then we have minus negative r cubed. When you cube a negative value, it stays negative. So we'll have negative r cubed divided by three. And now we can simplify further. This r cubed would be one r cubed. So for subtracting one third r cubed from one r cubed, we would be left with two thirds times r cubed. So this is equal to rho divided by two times two r cubed divided by three. And then I'm gonna distribute this negative through this quantity, but note that these two negatives are going to cancel each other out first, right? Subtracting a negative value makes it positive. So I'm just going to erase that negative sign and make that positive and then distribute this negative through here. So this negative will make this negative r cubed positive. So we'll have plus r cubed and then this term will be negative. So we'll have negative r cubed divided by three. All right, now just like what we did right here, r cubed minus r cubed divided by three is just going to be two thirds times r cubed. So I'm gonna rewrite that right now. We'll have another two r cubed divided by three. And if we add these two terms together, we'll have four r cubed divided by three. So the moment about the x-axis is equal to rho divided by two times four r cubed divided by three. That is the moment about the x-axis. All right, so now we have the moment about the x-axis for our planar lamina, and we have the total mass of the planar lamina, which means we are now ready to calculate y bar to finish off our center of mass or the centroid. We have that y bar is equal to the moment about the x-axis divided by the total mass. So we'll have y bar is equal to the moment about the x-axis. We have rho divided by two times four r cubed divided by three and that will be divided by the mass, which is rho times one half pi r squared. Now rho times one half will just be rho divided by two, and then we'll have pi r squared. Okay, now the first thing that I notice here is that we have a rho divided by two in the numerator and denominator, and so those are going to cancel out. And so what I said earlier just came to fruition. I mentioned that rho is going to be canceled out in our actual calculation for y bar, and so that's typically why we just assume it's equal to one if we're not explicitly told what the value of rho is or what the value of the density is, okay? But then if we divide a fraction by a value, that would be the same as multiplying that fraction by the reciprocal of whatever that denominator is. So what we'd have here is that y bar is equal to four r cubed divided by three multiplied by one divided by pi r squared. All right, we just took the reciprocal of the denominator here and then multiplied it by the numerator, right? If we take a look at that value right here, pi r squared, that would be represented as pi r squared divided by one. So the reciprocal would be flipping the numerator and denominator, which is what we have right here. Okay, so now we can simplify further. Notice that we have r cubed in the numerator and r squared in the denominator. Two of these r's will cancel out with those two r's and we'll be left with our final answer that y bar is equal to four times r divided by three pi. All right, we have four and then one of these r's is left over from canceling out with r squared and we're multiplying four r by one. So we have four r in the numerator and then all that's left in the denominator is three pi. So y bar is equal to four r divided by three pi and x bar is equal to zero. So our center of mass or centroid is zero comma four r divided by three pi. That is the centroid or the center of mass for the upper half of a circle with a radius of r and if that circle is centered at the origin. 
Okay, and so with that, that's it for this example. If you want to see some more examples related to moments, centers of mass, and centroids, feel free to check out the video that I have linked here on the screen. Or if you want to see some more videos related to Calculus 2, feel free to check out the playlist that I have linked here on the screen that has all of my other videos for Calculus 2 that might be able to help you. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.